Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief at theserverside.com. And you can follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ. Right now, I wanted to talk to you about the ins and outs of looking at your index and your Git working tree with the Git status command. I've created a folder here. It's uh, underscore Bart. As you can see, there's no Git or even file activity in there. But that's what I want to make my workspace. This is where I want to put all of my code for development. So if you want to do that, I guess the first thing you want to do is initialize that repository as a git repository. So I opened up my git bash here and I'll just do a little init command. As soon as I do that, you'll notice that a, a handsome little dot git directory appears. There's kind of shaded because it's a hidden directory. That's not part of what you would call the git working tree. Um, those are kind of uh, Part of the plumbing files for Git, but any of the files that I create in this area would be considered part of the working tree. Uh, one way to get insight about into your working tree is to use the git status command. And so right now I'll say, hey, give me some status git. And I'll say I'm on the branch master, there's been no commits, and really there's nothing of interest on there. So why not create a new page? Uh, a new file. Um, I'm going to do that using the touch command. Create a file called home.html. You'll see that file appears magically there after using the touch command. And why don't I issue the git status command again? And you notice here it says, hey, you know, on this uh, working tree in your workspace, in the git working tree, there's a file there named home.html and it's currently untracked. Now there's a reason why I called it home.html. You would think that the first file you create would be called index.html, but the reason why I called it home.html is because there's something special called the index, which keeps track of all the files that should be part of the next commit. And right now I haven't added home.html to the index. You can almost think of the file system when you work with Git as this multi-dimensional entity. There's the files that you see on the current working tree that are on the, the current file system uh, in your workspace. And then Git also has this sort of shadow file system that is called the index, which is all the files that should be part of the next commit. And I can always say git add home.html and then do a git status command and you'll notice that it says, hey, you know, there's been no commits yet, but this file has been turned from red to green. And turning red to green basically means this file is now being tracked by the index. If somebody actually does a commit, that file will become part of the next commit. And so why not do a commit? git commit-m my first commit all of a sudden that file has now been committed and if I do a git status well the git status is going to say you're on the branch master and there's nothing to commit because nothing's changed since your last commit um, so why don't we change something I may as well uh, add something to home.html let's see I think I can do like echo hello world and say send that output to home.html and then do a git status command and you notice it says hey somebody's changed home.html and of course if I bring up home.html you will see that yeah, it actually says hello world there right I mean that file has indeed been changed and even if I actually go in here and edit it with notepad you can actually see right there yeah content of that file is hello world so that file has now been changed and indeed it indicates that right now. So it now says, hey, this file has been, been modified. And so I can again add that, use the dot command there. You don't have to specify the, the file explicitly. And then I can say git commit my second commit. And then if I do a git status command again, all of a sudden it says I'm branch master, nothing to commit. So we see kind of new file, file about to be added to the index, one that's modified. Now one of the questions is what happens if you remove a file? Look at 
that the file has been removed using the rm command. And what happens now? It says, okay, this file has been deleted. Um, if I do a git add and then git commit, then it takes me back to my original state. I can do a git ref log. And you can see the history of commits there. Um, and you can even see the clean status on my, my current working tree. Anyways, that's sort of how the, the working tree exists. It's really about all of the files that are there inside of what you could consider your workspace, but not including those hidden plumbing files in the hidden.git folder there. Um, and it's just a way of, of, of creating files. Git keeps track of those files that are there. And if you really want insights into kind of what the status of the files are on your file system, whether something's been modified, deleted, added, whether something's tracked or untracked, um, the git status command is your window into the workings of the git working tree. Now I hope that really helps you understand how the git status command works, how it works with the index and the working tree, the working directory. Anyways, if you enjoyed that tutorial, why don't you head over to the serverside.com and the editor over there. Got lots of great stuff on Git, GitHub, GitLab, also anything to do with DevOps and enterprise software development. If you're interested in my personal antics, follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNC and subscribe on YouTube.